So have you ever been in a situation where you felt just unprepared? Unprepared for the task, even if you've had lots of preparation before the day of the event. You feel kind of excited, but you might also feel sick because of the unknown and just the build-up and the excitement to this moment. You know that it's where God has called you to be or you feel like this is what God wants you to do, but it might not normally be a situation or a group of people that you would be with. But God has placed in your heart something different, a love for this group, for this situation. Even the smells around you might be different to what you're used to, but God has stretched you to be ready for this. If it's where God is calling you to be, you've decided that you just want to go there. Maybe for some of you, you've had this experience and you've taken this different step as God stretched you out to go overseas. Maybe it was even when you started life in a new job or started a family. But this morning we're talking about and finishing off our stretched series and looking at how God stretches us in different ways and this morning specifically stretches us to go out to minister to different people, to the people that he's placed on our hearts to minister to, to love and to share our Lord and Saviour with. So as we finish this stretched series, we finish this verse that we've been looking at, Acts 1.8, the task that Jesus has given us to be his witness. So it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. As we allow God to stretch us and as we step out as his witnesses, as the people that he created us to be, there are going to be times when we don't feel ready. There are going to be times when we feel sick and a bit nervous and uncomfortable with the environment around us, with the people around us, because it's just different to what we are used to. But the cool thing is, the more we allow God to stretch us in that direction, the more natural it may become. We might still not necessarily like the smells, but he stretches our hearts to love these people, to love this situation. So last week, we looked at where we are now. We looked at how we are to be witnesses in our Jerusalem and our Judea. So we looked at how we are to grow ourselves, our relationship with God, so that we can go out and witness to others around us. So in our community, this can be our neighbors, the friendships that we already have with other people, even at work. So where we are now. And this morning, we finish up this series and celebrate the work God has done and God is doing as we look to how we are to go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So for the early church in Acts, Samaria was a place just up a bit around them. It was a place that had Samaritans, a place that Jewish people didn't really want to go to because of the people that were there for the Jews and the Samaritans didn't associate. There are many different places in scripture where Jesus goes against the norm, some being when he spoke to different people. And you may recall times when he spoke well of Samaritans or talked with Samaritans. There's a parable which we know as the Good Samaritan and we see Jesus urging to love their neighbors even if they disagree with them. This was in response to an expert in religious law. And instead of painting this Jewish leader as the hero in the parable, Jesus painted the Samaritan as the hero. And he put the Samaritan in that place. You may have also heard of how Jesus talked to a Samaritan woman at the well. 
And we're going to be looking a bit at this story this morning in John chapter 4, where we find Jesus sharing his love with this people that Jews did not commonly associate with. So we're going to have a brief look at this encounter starting in John chapter 4, verse 3. So if you have your scriptures, um, flip to John chapter 4, verse 3. It says, So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily because the well, but wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at this time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Here we see Jesus stopping in the Samaritan village at Sychar. The thing is, he actually didn't specifically need to go through Samaria if he didn't want to. He was traveling from Jerusalem to Galilee, which had two ways to go. There was one way which was a bit longer and it dodged Samaria completely. This was a route that many of the religious Jews chose to go so that they wouldn't encounter any Samaritans. The Jews didn't like the Gentiles, that's us, but they didn't like the Samaritans even more. This is because the Samaritans were a people who had links back to the Jewish people from the time when Judah was taken captive by Babylon. Basically, what happened was the Babylonians came and took the Jewish people, but they left the lower class people there. They left the poor people in Judah because they didn't want any lower class people with them. So they left them there and this group group of people who still had a belief in God, they intermarried with other cultures and so kind of became this different kind of Jewish people but they weren't. They still believed in God and they wanted to follow him in different ways. We even know that they built a temple to him and then John 4 it talks about how the Samaritans worship God in a different way to the Jews. But they built this temple to God and what happened was the Jewish people actually burnt that down. So this was the kind of relationship that the Jews and the Samaritans had, this one of just hatred towards each other. So Jesus could have taken this long path. He could have just dodged this this people completely if he didn't really want to talk to them. But Jesus had other plans. We see Jesus stop at this village. And from here we see this discussion with this woman where he shares with her who he is. He shares the living water that he offers. He shares with her things about herself that a stranger would have not known. And this conversation led her to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. So we'll pick up again in verse 25. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who was called Christ. And when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then the disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. 
But Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. The harvesters are paid good wages and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and harvester alike. You know the saying, one plants and another harvests. And it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others have already done the work and now you will get the harvest. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days, long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. Now we know that he is indeed the savior of the world. This is an amazing chapter where we see the love of God, the love of Jesus for all people. We can see that his disciples were surprised by him talking with a woman, but they didn't want to ask what he was doing. By now, they knew that Jesus did things for a reason, even if it was stretching cultural boundaries or things that they were used to. And we see this conversation between Jesus and his disciples about food. So it might have sounded like Jesus was saying he didn't need food. I'm sure that he was probably still hungry, but he was saying the work of God was more important to him than food. That if he needed to go hungry so that these people would come to salvation, he would, because it was more important. Jesus was trying to tell them that there were so many people who were ready to receive him, to receive salvation, that now was the time that the fields, that the people were ripe for the harvest. Jesus saw this as so important that this was his, his mission. Not just that the Jewish people would know who he is and receive eternal life, but that all people would, that the people in Samaria would, that we as Gentiles would, and the ends of the earth would receive salvation through him. Jesus gave us a pretty amazing example in this chapter. He spent time with the, the Samaritan people. Again, he could have just completely gone around them because he had other things to do, other people to see. Having this extra stop could have been inconvenient because he had his disciples with them and what would they think? Because they might get offended if he's talking to different people. But that wasn't his priority. His priority was the call, the mission of God. He did it not out of spite, not out of pride, but out of love. This means a lot of different things for us. First off, where is our Samaria. There could be many different places that we could call our Samaria. We could think about different countries that are a bit further out, but we could also think about people that we don't normally associate with. People who we would rather not have anything to do with because they're different to us, because they might be sinful. They might not share the same beliefs as us, the people that we just don't normally associate with. It could be a different group of people for each one of us. It's the kind of people that you want to dodge and go around because you don't really want to have a conversation with them. You know the people that I'm talking about for you individually, but we are called to go to Samaria, to these places, 
that are different to us. The Samaritans weren't too far away geographically as we looked at the map before and he was walking back um, to Galilee where he was going. It was just a bit of a stretch to get to them. In this passage, we see that Jesus chose to go and put himself and his disciples in a position where they would encounter these people where they would be able to speak with them and change a whole community. There may be people even in Yapoon around us. I'm sure that there are people in Yapoon even around us that we don't necessarily agree with. Their lifestyle will be different to ours. Maybe it's, maybe it's a bit similar to ours, but there's some differences, kind of like the Samaritans and the Jews. Jesus is calling us to go to those people as well, to love these people and to share the gospel with them too. We can get caught up in our misunderstandings at times. We can let those things get in the way. But in doing that, we might even miss the harvest that is just up the road from us. Jesus offers eternal life to all who believe in him. He gave the opportunity to us, us Gentile people, because of his love for all people in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And Acts 1 to 8 doesn't stop in the call in Samaria. It says to go to the ends of the earth. The ends of the earth can seem big. I know I've thought about how can my witness even go to the ends of the earth? For some people, it can mean going overseas, going on a mission trip and serving in these different places. Going to work and serve with people who you normally wouldn't associate with in a place that might have different smells, different people, different environments, somewhere that you are not used to. And we have numerous opportunities to do that within the Wesleyan Methodist Church. We can do this through Wesleyan World Missions, which we're going to be talking a bit about this morning. But we also have opportunities, even coming up next year, um, in, in working with other mission organizations that impact globally, looking at the work of compassion as we sponsor children in need as we just packed these shoe boxes and sent off through Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child. These are some ways that we're able to reach out to the ends of the earth. So this is one way that we're able to stretch, one way that we are able to go and be part of making an amazing impact for God. But it doesn't just stop there. I think some of us can get the thought in our minds that it's okay, I don't have to go because they're already going and we're already supporting them. We can get these thoughts thinking that there's already enough people serving as missionaries and so I'm just going to support maybe financially or in prayer, and while I don't want to discredit prayer and financial giving at all because it is so important and gets and helps these people serve in these these different places that we haven't gone ourselves, I don't want us to use different thoughts as an excuse. Sometimes when we don't want to be stretched, we can even use spiritual excuses. But the reasons we can't use these thoughts as excuses is because the task at hand is urgent. The Great Commission in Matthew 28 and this verse in Acts 1.8 is important because it's a command from Jesus. He tells us to go to the ends of the earth, but he's coming back and he won't come back until the ends of the earth have had the opportunity to hear. As his people, it's our job to make sure that everyone has heard prior to his return so that he can return. In Matthew 24 and in Mark 13, Jesus talks about how the end will come. And it's when the good news is preached. So Matthew 24, verse 14, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it. 
and then the end will come. And Mark 13, 10, for the good news must be preached to all the nations. See, his concern and heart is for the whole world, for all the nations. And he left us with this commission to go into all the world and to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. The return of Jesus is getting closer and we know this because the good news is being preached all over the world and spreading in amazing ways. I've been doing some reading as I've been working on a subject in global missions and have been looking at how the gospel has been spread and I've been so encouraged to see and know that the church is growing. The great commission is being fulfilled and people are coming to know Christ. And so in these pictures that we can see, there is a dramatic increase in the rise of churches in Christianity all over the world. And we ought to praise God for the work that he is doing. This is how we can know that the end is getting closer because more and more people are coming to know our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news is being shared all over the world with many nations. But the work is not done yet. See, there are roughly seven and a half billion people on earth and there are still around 3 billion people who are unreached which means they have little to no access of the gospel this means that there are people in desperate need for Christ but they have no churches no missionaries no bible no christians who are able to tell them about Jesus in australia we are considered a reached nation even though there are so many people who don't know the Lord. But each person in Australia has the opportunity to hear the gospel because there are people who follow Jesus here. There are churches. We have the word of God in so many versions in our own language. But I'm talking about this three billion people who don't have that option. It's a massive amount of people who are yet still to hear the gospel. Can I encourage you to be praying about this group of people who are unreached completely? There's amazing work going on all over the world. There's amazing work going on in countries who previously had no as, um, access to the gospel and now do. But there's still work to be done. We know that there are many people within reached groups who need Jesus, like our own community in Yapoon. But this is to make us aware of what is going on on a global scale. God is moving. God is at work. And while it might seem big, I want to encourage us to know that this is still part of our job. We are still able to be part of going to the ends of the earth. And while it may seem overwhelming or daunting because three billion is a pretty big number, who knows, maybe someone listening will be someone who goes to those unreached places. There is still much to do to build the kingdom. And if we want to see Christ return sooner, we need to be part of stretching out and reaching those unreached people. And to see those in our Samaria come to know Jesus too. Going into all the world, into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth is what each of us are called to do. And there are many ways that we can do this. And this morning we're going to come back to those six points that we've been looking at each week. And over the past four weeks. And so you might be familiar with these points now. But the first one is encouraging. Encourage our missionaries and each other. If we are going to go to Samaria and to the ends of the earth, we need to encourage each other to stretch ourselves and to take those steps of faith. It will not be comfortable to go to Samaria or to the ends of the earth, but as we encourage each other and we encourage those who have been sent already, it reminds us that we're not alone, that 
we are working for something bigger than ourselves, working someone bigger than ourselves. Encouraging each other and other missionaries can even mean going and visiting those people who are serving overseas to pray with them, to remind them that they are not forgotten while they serve wherever they are. So encouraging each other can even mean encouraging each other to take a step of of faith and go, to go even, even when we're nervous and unsure because God might have called you to do that. Next one is teaching in Samaria and the ends of the earth. The truth needs to be taught. The gospel needs to be shared. There are so many people who may have heard the gospel, but they might not have really heard the gospel. They might not have really understood the gospel. And so we encourage each other to continue to teach. And this happens as we stretch ourselves, stretch ourselves to step out and to teach and to share, to go to those places and people that we are called to and teach and share the truth. Nurturing, growing, and maturing. Nurture, grow, and mature in the faith. So again, that includes our faith, but also the faith of those we go to. This can mean staying in Samaria for a certain time, as Jesus did, to ensure that these new believers had a firm foundation, that they knew the truth that they had been taught. This can also mean giving and praying to those who are serving and going to the ends of the earth to see our faith grow and be stretched so we can go and do these things, but to nurture those who are already serving and doing that too. And in the process, we build the kingdom of God. So building the kingdom. The kingdom of God is bigger than just where we are now in this local area that we live. It's much bigger than ourselves. It's people everywhere for people everywhere to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Being stretched in this way is not comfortable. It's not always the the most easy process. And we've talked about this a bit in the past, but the call to encourage and teach, nurture, grow, mature, and build the kingdom of God is so important, more important than food, just as Jesus talked about. There will be times when it might feel big and scary and impossible. There are times when the call just feels so unknown, but we feel that prompting there to go. But that unknown might make us feel like we shouldn't. But God is calling us to go to Samaria, to go to the ends of the earth, to not be content with just being saved, to not rest until we have told the people that God brings into our path, into our life. It's not about being, be feeling ready. It's about doing it even if we're afraid, because if God is for us, Who can be against us? The early missionaries had it very different to the way that we have it today, thanks to technology. And I was reading this book by David Sills, and he writes about how the early missionaries started. Many of them followed William Carey's pattern for his example. He was one of the first earlier big missionaries that we know about. And he created this pattern, I guess, of leaving home. So they followed, his, followed the way he went, leaving home, believing that they would never see their loved ones on earth again. They sailed on tall ships to unknown countries to serve their target people groups. These missionaries took on the call of God even when they were afraid, even if it meant death and possibly never seeing those that they loved again or on this side of heaven. The message of the gospel was so clear and so important to them. 
So going to the ends of the earth now does look a bit different for us than those earlier missionaries. But one thing is the same. It's the heart of the gospel. It is going to the ends of the earth, to those places that need our Lord Jesus Christ, to those places that feel different to our own, where there is persecution, going out further than just here and being willing to stretch ourselves, stretch our faith, stretch out our arms towards God in expressing our trust of him and expressing our love towards those who need the gospel.